What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 152. Today, we're going to be talking about Dr. Gria. We are. We are. And there's a lot to talk about with him. So we're going to be looking specifically at Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, which is his most recent documentary. And it's very controversial in the UFO community. It is. And we've talked about him quite a bit. But today, we're going to kind of look at a different uh, p- part of his work, really, and probably the most important aspect of it, which is, are you know, if aliens are here, mm-hmm. if they are in the vicinity of Earth, are we able to communicate with them? And according to Dr. Greer, that answer is yes, through meditation and some other things. So that's why it's so controversial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge claim. It is. So you kind of need some, what do we always say? Extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. Right. And he has quite a bit of evidence, though. Yeah, and we're going to kind of dig into his past a little bit, because I -hmm. I know we've done a couple, we've done a couple episodes on, on him and some of his work, but... We've never really dug into like his past and kind of his background Mm -hmm. either, because I think it's interesting to look at people that come forward and bring forth really, really compelling information and make bold claims like this. I think it's always really interesting to kind of dig into their background and look at, you know, Mm -hmm. what are the experiences that they have and, you know, some of the different jobs and other responsibilities they might have held over the years. And kind of how that all ties into where they're at now. Because, I mean, anybody can go out and make a documentary now about anything, any subject, and make bold claims and say, oh, you know, I I can talk to aliens or... That's a big, bold claim, that's for sure. Yeah. So we're going to kind of examine that question. And the other piece of that is, you know, if, if we think about aliens and we believe that they are here and there's evidence to support that, well... Is there a possibility that some of these alien races or extraterrestrials may be foes as opposed to, you know, Mm -hmm. friendly beings? That seems to be one of the biggest conversations going on in the UFO community right now is, are aliens a threat? Could they be a threat? Right. Are we naive to think that they're if, you know, because Dr. Greer pretty much believes that they're not a threat. So there, there's a big divide kind of in the community right now. It's like one of the most who you hear talking. Yeah. The yeah. UFO world, like mm-hmm. since I've been in it, is a very almost like toxic community because there's <laughs> it's very like divided. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of people on one side that are like, we don't know what UFOs are. There's no evidence that aliens are here or it's aliens that are piloting these UFOs. So therefore, it just remains this kind of unexplained mystery. Where on the other side, you've got a bunch of different people out there, including Dr. Greer and some others that believe that these UFOs are some type of spacecraft from another star system and that there are these intelligent beings from other other galaxies and perhaps even other dimensions that are mm-hmm. here trying to communicate with us and we just need to sort of reach out to them to establish that that communication. Yeah. So everyone's take on it is kind of different. So that's what we're going to be looking into today is just kind of how what Dr. Greer thinks and what do we think about what he thinks and yeah. kind of exploring all possibilities because I know our audience is very split on Dr. Greer. Um it seems like I mean, most of our audience really likes him and is interested in what he's saying, but there's a big chunk that is very skeptical and have have even maybe some concerns. And I think that's valid with anyone making these types of claims. I mean, you kind of have to have that level of skepticism in order in order to stay, you know, stay rational about it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to look at, you know, the evidence that he's put forward. We're going to look at his background, his history, you know, kind of what he brings to the table. And then we're going to kind of give you our opinions on the mm-hmm. whole subject as a whole. Mm-hmm. And, you know, is, you know, this Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, which is his CE5 protocols, which are used in order to make contact with aliens. Is this a feasible thing? Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. And, you know, do we believe that aliens are here and they're our friends? Or is it something we should be concerned about? So that's what we're going to be diving into today. Yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff that, well, I find it to be fun stuff. I, I think, think it's we so all interesting. Find it, to be fun stuff. it is. I mean, I think talking about what the possibilities are is definitely intriguing yeah. to think well, about what the future could look like right. and what could be out there. Yeah, I mean, the ramifications of confirming mm-hmm. extraterrestrials are here <laughs> and attempting insane. to make communication with us are world changing. <laughs> like, it's going to oh, change yeah. the whole. Oh, dynamic yes. of the entire planet and the human race big time and hopefully propel us forward or hopefully. <laughs> it could propel us into chaos and 
disaster or even interplanetary war, according to some people. So, <laughs> so on that lots note, of scenarios. let's get into the show. <laughs> exactly. Before we get into, we got a couple interesting news stories for you, but we wanted to first remind everybody we started our own CBD company. Yes, we did. Higherlovewellness.com. If you want to check out our products, we are THC free. So you don't have to worry about that. And In all we the have lab testing yeah. on, yes. Um, well, it doesn't absorb the same way, but yeah, right. we have lab testing on our, our website so you can see it and confirm for yourself, but we've had great feedback from everyone who's gotten their products so far. Yes. Great feedback on the flavoring, which is one thing we're super proud of is the flavoring of our products because we flavor with terpenes. So they taste as close to fruit as you can. Yeah. Which if you don't know what a terpene is, it's basically the molecule in plants and fruits mm -hmm. that give it its aroma and flavor. So we actually extract those from those fruits in order to infuse our CBD oils and gummies with and our, uh, our vape, vape cartridges, cartridges as well yep. with those natural flavors. Yeah, wax the wax as, as well. well. Yeah, that's a super unique product that we carry, CBD wax. And we also have turp pens to go with that. So yeah, everything's available on our website if you want to check it out. And we will be coming out with more things in the future. So we look forward to that because we're already working behind the scenes on yeah, some new stuff. Yeah, lots of exciting so. stuff coming. This is just the beginning. Definitely. So also this episode is brought to you by Third Love, Upstart, Blender's Eyewear, Pretty Litter, and Candid CO. So let's go ahead and get into this first story. This ties right into our main topic of today. And that is there's been another UFO sighting by an American Airlines flight 2292 in the northern part of New Mexico. It was just doing a routine flight to Arizona. And at around 1 p.m. on Sunday, uh, the 21st of February, uh, there was some interesting radio calls that went out. And we'll go ahead and play that now have any targets up here we just had something go right over the top of us that i hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us wow cylindrical object so we're talking about an unidentifiable object that is a cylinder or cylindrical in shape that flew over the top of this airplane at 30 sets or at thirty seven thousand feet does that kind of sound like the uma uma in shape. But that was like way, that was not where pilots fly. That was like in outer space. No, and, I know. Yeah, but I'm but just saying, is it maybe? I think a little bit smaller than that, probably. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So it's this. You well, know. yeah, obviously smaller than that. <laughs> but, but yeah, I just meant like the shape of it as a craft. Yes. Cigar shaped is what you could say. It's like a cigar shaped okay. type of UFO that flew over the top of this airplane. And what's interesting is that the FAA hasn't commented on this yet. And the American Airlines uh, PR people have already said that the recording in this radio communication was fully authentic. So we know this is 100% real. And also that the FBI is apparently aware of this as well. And I think from a national security standpoint, they're thinking that, you know, he said it kind of looked like maybe a missile, which that's really concerning if there's just missiles flying through the air on like a routine flight to Arizona over the top of an airplane like that. So, well, if it was a missile, wouldn't we have? found out that's the thing is that the military there's no military activity at the time and why the hell would they be shooting missiles off in the airspace where pilots are flying with passengers may, uh, yeah what so clearly this thing is something else that we don't know the origin of and there's been no update since of what they even think it is well they're not going to say they're trying to investigate it right now and if they mm. do know what it, if they have more information on it they haven't released it yet yeah and they probably won't if they do actually know what it is and it's something they but imagine about this will probably just disappear like everything else all these other things yeah. you know well it's getting recorded now and it, i mean i guess it's been being recorded but the fact that we're actually able to get our hands on this radio foot uh mm -hmm. audio is actually pretty interesting and i just think of like god these airline pilots must see this kind of shit all the time like and i think they do a lot of them see unidentifiable objects flying yeah there's over them. been a lot of reports just in the last couple of years even from pilots seeing stuff you know the audio and you can tell just in their voice how genuine yeah their concern yeah he is was clearly like shook. whoa what the hell yeah because i mean you're flying at well i think they fly <laughs> yeah, at like 600 seven, 800 miles per hour and up you at see something you've never feet. seen like that would just throw you off so much and they fly that high to avoid hitting objects right you know, so what is up there at 37,000 feet plus just flying around with these passenger jets? Mm -hmm. And that's that's the big question. And that's like what we're talking about today is yeah. like, what are, you know, 
Well, is it course, an alien just flying around up there maybe, or is it something else going on? Maybe. I mean, of course it could be something military though. You know. And they're just not saying what it is. Yeah. Because why would they want everyone to know? And also the, if 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 it is it's probably a big oopsie if yeah, one of their things probably. flew that close to a passenger because i mean probably. but then again i'm like if that was military i feel like we would have already had like an accident where a, a cruise missile or something they were testing like knocks out one of our just a passenger jet flying i was reading this one thing about because it happened on a sunday and they made a, a point about how the military kind of like sundays are the military's days off you right. know, kind of a, mm -hmm. in theory and so they're not likely to do testing and even if they were Obviously, the protocol is to, you know, tell the FAA yeah. so they cannot fly planes in that area for that time being or whatever. But mm -hmm. they coordinate that for yeah. sure. Yeah. This is an interesting mm -hmm. point, too, that another ex-military pilot brought up about this particular sighting is the fact that whatever this thing was, it must have been coming at them head on. So they're flying through the air and all of a sudden the cylindrical UFO comes flying Jeez. head on at them and Whoa. goes up over the top of them. Almost because like in order it, was, it corrected its path. Right, it was like flying and whatever it was was intelligent enough to know not Shit. to <laughs> crash into this plane wow. and flew up over the top of it. Because if it came at the side, the pilot's never going to see it. Yeah, He's never going to actually physically see it with his own eyes. And instead, this thing clearly was coming straight at it. Wow. But That's then wild. went over the top of it. That must have, Can you imagine being no, a pilot though? Really and you're can't. like, oh, your heart's like almost stops beating because you're like, oh my God, we just about, we could have just died. We could have just been blown I'd to pieces to interview by something. a pilot that has seen something i know right it'd be so interesting to it hear be. what that would be like but it's just so interesting because i feel like every couple months there's there's reports mm -hmm. like this coming out of mysterious objects that are just flying around in in the airspace every yeah. time i go on flights i'm always like god it'd be cool to like look out <laughs> look out my window and see, see some, something yeah. something or terrifying i would be scared <laughs> you'd have to sedate me seriously but i don't i don't know it's interesting how this type of stuff doesn't really seem to make it very far with mainstream media, you know, and just people's interests. Like, why aren't people more interested in this type of thing? Don't they want to know what these things are? Or they just think there's got to be some logical explanation. So well, let me just not think about right. it. That's that's Cause this kind of stuff. It's like, it's driving me crazy. But that's because we're interested in this topic. And a lot of people are interested. Be? Well, well, fuck, they went on. This is our planet. mainstream you're media news like a year or two ago and literally said the Pentagon was studying UFOs and stuff and nobody gave a shit. I know it was. I know that was disappointing. Like everybody's like, oh, whatever. I don't think people can mentally handle it. So they have to just think it's so oh, it's just like a thing, though. You know, it's like, yeah, it's not really going to be it. Well, I think a it's threat. It's one of those things that is just going to be until the masses until the day happens see it <laughs> with their own eyes. It's yeah. just not going to be real to many people. I know. It's going to be kind of this, you know, tab. I don't thing. think people really realize the average person just how many sightings there are and how legitimate they are. Yeah. You know, that they can't be explained away. I think most people are like, oh, hoaxes. And no, it's a very real phenomenon. I mean, there's a whole organization, MUFON, that literally investigates sightings. They get reports of sightings all over the country, thousands yeah. every, you know, year. I mean, mm -hmm. it's. It's a huge thing and it's been happening for a long time. So, so it's like, are all of those government? Probably, Probably some not. are, but all of them? Mm -mm. Most likely not. That's really interesting. This next uh, sort of topic is very interesting, though. This is about Akon. I haven't heard his name in a while. Dude, I love Akon. Like, I was a big Akon fan in high school. Yeah, me too. I love him. So many of his songs. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite Akon song? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Probably this song that no one knows called Freedom. It's actually a oh, really yeah. beautiful song. Remember yeah. I used to play it for you in high school? Yeah. I loved that album. Mm -hmm. I know like every song on that album by heart. Remember Soul Survivor? Oh yeah, of Akon course. That's a real young throwback. <laughs> oh yeah. Convict. Sometimes he had a lyrical genius. I mean, that one song it's like, gotta break up right now, now, now. Yeah. We need to link up right now, now, now. We should make up right now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he really is an amazing person. And a lot of people don't know this about him, but he's been doing incredible stuff for a really long time. Like yeah, years now. Stuff that no one else in the music industry, well, a few people, but very little people Not do this on the type scale of stuff that he's doing with their either. wealth. He has done incredible stuff. So Akon is working on developing a futuristic city in Senegal, Africa that runs off clean energy and also a cryptocurrency that he's developed called a coin. Oh, hell, a coin. <laughs> yeah, literally developed wow. his own crypto. His goal is to make, make Africa, like bring Africa 
uh, parts of Africa that are still struggling to get up to speed with the rest of the world and kind of bring, bring them all into modern times. And, you know, there's a lot of places in Africa that are just, they just don't have the resources. They don't have yeah. the wealth there. And, mm-hmm. you know, just he's work, he's using his own wealth and his own, you know, status mm-hmm. really to get other Power. investors on board with this idea of creating this futuristic city that would be on par with like, he's saying it would be on par with like Dubai. Like this thing is really cool. Wow. There's actually a video of the 3d model of what this thing might look like. And it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Here's, here's a little clip of him talking about uh, his, his city that he's building. It's pretty interesting. My name is Akon, and these are three steps to building your own city. And we will also be working on governmental... Uh, First, you have to have a dream. The project itself is a $6 billion project um, on a 10-year construction uh, build out. Uh, we're going to do it in three phases. Uh, three and a half years, phase one should be finished. Uh, and that consists of the hospital, uh, the Akon Village Resort, um, uh, the police station, fire station, and the basic infrastructure like all the roads, lighting, and everything like that. The residential also is a part of phase one, which is condominiums, uh, mansion resorts as well. So Akon Lighting Africa actually is what's sparking everything that you're seeing now. The goal was, okay, now that we have pilots in 16 countries, now let's start building actual cities that Akon Lighting actually will power. One of our biggest donors is uh, the Moale Medical Center out of uh, Kenya. Um, and Julius Moale is the owner of that. Um, his dream was always to build a medical city, a renewable medical city. Um, so he came on board and he has a family practice that actually does a lot of investment throughout Africa as well, who helped kind of bring in the funding for the $4 billion that we've actually secured at the moment. Wow. That is so impressive. Isn't like, it? Like, talk about being an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, building your own fucking city. And How a philanthropist. Cool. I mean, yeah. not doing it for himself. He's doing it for the people. Right. And he's making such a huge impact. Wow. That is really cool to see. I wish we ha- that this was more normal and it wasn't such an outlier for people right. to give back this much, people with that type of wealth. Yeah. It's really, really cool. It really is. And, you know, I think it, it's going to, if if this actually, you know, succeeds, and I think it will, he's got $4 mm-hmm. billion of the $6 billion he needs to build it already. Almost I mean, there. this is going to change that whole continent. Yeah. I mean, this is the first yeah. start. What's going to stop him from, you know, if this ends up being a huge success to popping up cities like that all over and bringing all the people up to you know the standards of living that the rest of us are so lucky to enjoy how cool how smart yeah i want to go maybe in a few years we can go that'd be really cool i think it's going to take 10 years to build but yeah yeah yeah. 10 years from now maybe we could go (laughs) whip it up that'd be cool wow that's really really interesting to see i've always thought akon is just such a cool person and he's always been about the charity forever so and then the whole idea of implementing a cryptocurrency. Yeah, a coin. Are you kidding me? That's sick. Form of payment. I mean, that's so smart because so many of these smaller countries just across the world, their currencies are just not stable. Mm-hmm. They lose value or they have little to no value with the rest of the international markets. So, I mean, if you haven't realized it yet, cryptocurrency is the, is the currency future. of the future. Definitely. In all forms, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or, you know, whatever it is. I, I truly believe that eventually we're going to see the, the whole world move to some type of centralized cryptocurrency. Well, that's or maybe the only be, way we're going to get close to having the power back in our hands. Yeah, exactly. To some degree. Right. Yeah. Rather than having the World Bank, mm-hmm. which yeah. we won't get into that. But not today. <laughs> we have an episode on that. Yeah, we do. <laughs> But yeah, really cool that yeah. Akon's doing that. And he's, you know. I can't wait to see it like as it's getting developed. It'd be very cool to A-coin. watch. Acoin. That's really funny. Acoin. That's so good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing Acon City. Yeah. One day when it's built. It looks really cool based on the. Did they say models. what it's going to be called? Acon City. Oh, it's just straight up going to be Acon City. Oh, I don't like that. He should do like Aconia. 
Well, Welcome maybe he will. Iconia. He said that his Iconia. whole like premise for it Convictia. was kind of like what Wakanda showed, like oh, uh, in yeah. Black Panther. Oh, that'd be so cool. That this was already in the works before that movie came out, but he now uses Wakanda to kind of explain to people what he's trying to build hmm. in Senegal when he you know talks to investors and things like what that. What a forward thinker! Seriously. I love him. Really, really impressive stuff. I'm going to listen to that album again tonight. It's <laughs> been a long time. Akon. Support his music. I need to refresh myself in the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Convict. Music. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get into Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. But before we do, I want to thank our first sponsors for today. Fresh out of San Diego, California comes the only sunglasses brand I'm probably ever going to wear again. I'm talking about Blender's Eyewear. When you see the shade selection that they have, you're going to be blown away. I got myself a pair of some spider jets and that's exactly what I'm wearing right now. And these things are absolutely awesome. I love the quality. They're polarized lenses and best of all, the price is absolutely affordable at just $48. They're absolutely perfect to wear when I'm just driving around, working out in the yard, whatever it may be. Blenders has got me covered. Chase Fisher started blenders by selling his beachy shades out of a backpack. While doubling as a surf instructor on Pacific Beach, his goal is to create an adventurous mid-price eyewear option with the same cool factor as other leading styles. Unlike expensive big brand shades that you've probably lost or smashed in the past, blenders are actually affordable. So you're not going to cry as much when something inevitable happens to them. Blender's team of in-house designers are constantly coming out with new styles from orange polarized wraparounds, tortoise shell frames with purple lenses to classic gold arms on black lens. And it's not just sunglasses. Blenders has readers and blue lights as well as a snow collection with goggles and accessories. So live in forward motion with Blenders today. To score 15% off your Blenders purchase, visit BlendersEyewear.com and make sure you enter promo code MILEHIREVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com, code MILEHIREVIP for 15% off your order. With Blenders, you can rock with pride worldwide. So you know that one comfortable bra that you have that is always your go-to when you open up your drawer? Third Love is that bra. Third Love bras are my favorite bras. They're the only bras that I have worn for a few years now. They're so, so comfortable, and they also give you really good support. And what's cool about Third Love is they have more than 80 different sizes, and their bras are made with signature memory foam cups, no-slip straps, and a scratch-free band. And they go from cups AA to I, and that includes half cups and bands 30 to 48. It's time to let go of your bad bra. Your boobs deserve better. And they have different options from lace that actually feels so soft to their number one rated 24-7 classic t-shirt bra, which I can tell you is very, very comfortable. And you can check out all these exclusive styles at thirdlove.com. And now Third Love offers loungewear. So from the couch to weekend outings, their loungewear is made to wear everywhere. It's perfect for working from home, lounging, or just running errands. And Third Love donates all their gently used in return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. And so far, Third Love has donated over $40 million in bras. Third Love knows that your one true fit is out there. So right now they're offering our listeners 20% off your first order. All you got to do is go to thirdlove.com slash mile higher now to get your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off of your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash mile higher for 20% off today. Unhappy with your smile? You don't have to be. Thousands of people have used Candid, the clear, comfortable, removable, and practically invisible aligners to help straighten their teeth. And now they love their smile too. And Candid is here to help straighten your teeth so you can fall in love with your smile again. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. You'll have the same quality of care you'd get from an in-office orthodontist from the comfort and convenience of your own home. And while other companies use general dentists, Candid only works with orthodontists. And with Candid, the same orthodontist who created your plan is going to be there with you from start to finish, so you'll never have to wonder how you're doing. Best of all, the average candid treatment just takes six months and you'll start seeing results way before then. And it costs thousands of dollars less than traditional braces. Candid makes it super simple. They send you the kit to your house to make your aligners. It is probably the easiest kit out there. 
So become your best you. Start straightening your teeth today, and right now you can save $75 on Candid's starter kit. Go to candidco.com slash milehire and use code milehire. That's candidco.com slash milehire and use code milehire. You want to take advantage of this limited time offer in order to save $75 on your starter kit. Again, that's candidco.com slash milehire and make sure you use code milehire. Okay, so we are going to be talking specifically today about Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, which is Dr. Greer's third documentary. His first one was Sirius in 2013, and then he also came out with Unacknowledged in 2017, which was definitely his most popular. Yeah, I mean... That really trended, I guess. And it was like top on Netflix for a while, too. Yeah, I think he got that. Was That's really what put him on the map. Definitely. Uh, definitely. At least in the, the public's eye. That's when I really found him. And I remember just being um, just amazed when I saw Unacknowledged. I mean, that that film really changed my perspective on things. Yeah, well, it, it was a great, he did a great job of, of compiling all the information around the UFO subject and, you know, documents. I mean, putting together the entire story, kind of start to finish of, you know, why, why, are, why do we care about UFOs? What are, mm-hmm. you know, what could they be? What evidence is there? Right. What does the military know? The government know? Kind of going all the way back to Roswell, explaining mm-hmm. that. And, you and know, he had documentation exactly. of a lot of it. To Lots prove of declassified it. stuff. Yeah, which made me change my mind on a lot of things and open my mind to so many things. I mean, truly. It's a great place to start, too. It like is. if you're somebody new to the subject or maybe, you know, you have a friend mm-hmm. or a parent who's skeptical or they're like, you know, show me the evidence and you're like, oh, well, there's so much. I don't know where to start. Yeah. That's a great Send film to, to have people watch because it really does. It's so true. Inform you on from a very like factual perspective yeah. because, you know, he includes a lot of very reputable, pe- mm-hmm. uh, reputable people mm-hmm. and what they've sources. said. It's not just whistleblowers and random people's right. stories and experiences, which that type of stuff is just, I understand some of it could be real, but it's harder for me to believe. Right. I've been trying to get my dad to watch Unacknowledged for so long. I think it just helps you kind of, I guess, yeah, introduce you to this world that can be really overwhelming. Like you almost have to sit and watch it in like three parts because there's so much information. It's just like a huge info a huge, dump. Yeah, it is. Um, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind is a little different. It definitely has more critique because he's making some huge claims. And well, it's it's all of his work specifically versus sharing information about the ufo community that can right. be confirmed and right and yeah. and bringing in other people's perspectives mm-hmm. on the subject mm-hmm. it was a more of an unbiased look at i mean yes. still biased in a lot of ways but it's a more unbiased more look than at the subject close encounters yeah exactly and then with close encounters of the fifth kind this is really like the root of his work and what sets dr greer apart from any other sort of ufologist out there i mean there's a lot of people out there that study the subject some of the most notable ones that that i particularly like are there's richard dolan he takes a very like more scientific approach to things there's uh nick pope there there's so many different individuals out there who have taken a look at the subject written books shared their work on the subject but dr greer really kind of takes it to the next level and he also approaches it from a very spiritual perspective. He does. He which does. is yeah. makes him truly unique, I think, in mm-hmm. this this world of mm-hmm. UFOs and, and aliens. But I think that really bothers people as well. It does. It and really does. I can does. see why. I can see why. And yeah. I can see why people are really skeptical because Yeah, I mean, the things he claims are just really they're really out there. I mean, they're if if they're all true, if everything he's saying is true, he has some really groundbreaking shit. Like if everything in close close encounters is real, this documentary is incredible and really changes your outlook on aliens. But at the end of the day, we really just don't know. Right. Well, a lot of it is people's experiences mm-hmm. and what they've experienced That's the, firsthand. That's the trouble with him. too. Yeah. And, a lot of it is the experiences. And, and you know, some of the evidence people would say is questionable and doesn't necessarily you know, a hundred percent prove anything. Well, it's just like UFO abduction stories. You know, you cover those a lot on lights out at the end of the day, you can't really prove it. It's not like they have pictures of their experiences. Right. So you have to just take their word for it. And that's what a lot of close encounters is, is listening to these people's stories and choosing whether or not you believe them. And we have literally gotten many emails from our own followers, you guys that have been on these CE fives 
I remember this one girl, she wrote me this long email about her experience and it blew my mind. And she had just gone on one with Dr. Greer and she really saw it. So it's like, if you don't believe him and you think he's making it all up, you kind of have to discount everyone that's involved and everyone that's had these experiences. So the more, the fact that he does have so many people and there's pictures of them, there's photos, I mean, pictures, videos of the actual sightings in his, I mean, he has documentation of it. So is which, it all fake? Which on the flip side, people would say, you know, a lot of the, and, and we'll get to that later on, but yeah. there's a lot of paranormal investigators out there who come at this subject with a very scientific mind you use a scientific process and you use a very you know you use the tools that scientists use to make discoveries every day and when you do that unfortunately video and photo evidence oftentimes doesn't hold up in that mm -hmm. when you scrutinize it that way and so that's why you know you really have to take everything that even the video and photos and a lot of this film is photos and evidence that he's taken or captured at these close encounters of the fifth kind expeditions that he does and, and again we'll get into that a little bit more later but let's kind of like rewind things and go take a look at dr greer as a person because you're probably wondering like why is he called like what makes him a doctor like he's mm -hmm. a ufo guy and he's a doctor like what's what does that even mean like so for one dr greer before he really got into all of this he's he was actually a traumatologist he worked as an er doctor in north carolina uh, which was actually where he was born he's from charlotte north carolina and he was a doctor for a good amount of time, I believe. I believe for a number of years where he worked in the ER and, and that's hence why he's Dr. Stephen Greer. Mm -hmm. And then right off the bat, he makes a pretty extraordinary claim with his early childhood. And this is where some people start to already question him is he claims that on a sunny afternoon, he had an encounter with a UFO as a kid. And that three other kids suddenly saw a silver oval shaped craft appear in the sky. And then it was totally silent and seamless and hovered over the sky for a short amount of time. And then it just disappeared instantly. And then the few weeks later that followed, he had a series of lucid dreams, night encounters, and that strengthened his connection with a presence outside of this universe. So he's claimed to always had this bond and ability. And ability. Yeah. And that's. I totally see where people are like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to, especially as somebody who doesn't have any psychic yeah. abilities, <laughs> it's hard for you to possibly wrap your head around this idea that there are individuals that have these gifts, mm -hmm. and that self-proclaimed gifts, I guess you, could, you should say, because you can't measure this, right. this ability on any scale of any kind. But I believe that many times people, you know, even from a young age, if they do have some sort of psychic abilities or an ability to connect to a higher level of consciousness from an early age you know it does happen there's lots and lots of stories of individuals who have psychic abilities from a young age or mediums yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I do think it is possible for people to have these these types of kind of unnatural skills that many of us don't have yeah i mean i believe that it's possible i just it's hard when and i mean not everyone that claims they have these things actually can have them it just doesn't, wouldn't make right, sense right right and again there's no way to verify this this was in 1965 so mm -hmm. he's about 10 years old at the time when he had his first ufo encounter but i have to say my gut instinct is to believe him yeah i don't know why that's just my personal opinion yeah but i mean like when he talks about these things especially the things he experienced as a child I don't know. He, he sounds very genuine to me, but maybe I'm a fool. But the, yeah, I mean, there's no way to know. Mm -hmm. It's you got to take his word for it at the end yeah. of the day, and and you kind of look at him as a whole and really decide whether or not he's telling the truth or not. Because mm -hmm. there's some really good liars out there who <laughs> That's believe true. the lies that they that they, that they actually tell. They actually mm -hmm. believe these things are real that they're mm -hmm. actually talking about. So a lot of people, uh, especially in mainstream mm -hmm. sources, just think he's a full of it and of course he had a ufo encounter at 10 years old and then mm -hmm. later on uh when he was a little bit older uh, in 1973 he suffered an injury where he ended up having a near-death experience and during this near-death experience he said he found himself in space where he was experiencing states of bliss and peace and in this state two bright lights approached him and conveyed a deep spiritual message to him and basically it He's, he accepted this message and followed the request to return to earth instead of dying. And basically the message was you need to go and tell people on this planet about 
you know, extraterrestrial life. Like this was his, his mission. That's really interesting because I've heard so many people's near-death experience stories and so many of them say things similar to this. Like yeah. they were told, you're not done yet. You still have a mission. You still have life to live. You need to go back and send them back in. Right. So that's kind of interesting. And obviously this type of experience would inspire somebody to go into medicine. I mean, it makes sense mm -hmm. why he went into medicine. He wanted to help people. He wanted to, you know, before he really figured out how he was going to, you know, start talking about UFOs and approach that whole subject. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly the time frame of when this next event happened to him. But later on in the fall, he had another experience following meditation on Rich's Mountain. Um, where he was actually brought aboard a spaceship, uh, some type of extraterrestrial craft, which I, again, people are gonna be like, what? Yeah, that sounds seriously. And it was here that he really learned. He, he believes he learned the CE five protocols. This is like where he was, he was shown how you communicate with these otherworldly beings aboard this, this basically this abduction way. I mean, it wasn't really an abduction. He went willingly on board. But this is where he got the knowledge required in order to go out and teach the world about how to do close encounters of the fifth kind. It's safe to say from early on, he's been very interested and a practicer of meditation and yeah. specifically transcendental meditation, which is transcendental, transcendental. <laughs> is that right? I think so. Transcendental. Yes. Transcendental meditation mm -hmm. and he really studied this quite a bit and in addition to that he studied the ancient vedas which the vedas are a large body of religious texts originating in ancient mm -hmm. india which if you didn't know a lot of people I, I think it's pretty much proven that hindus or hinduism is the oldest religion mm -hmm. on the planet and so these texts go back basically to the beginning of time and it's very interesting because there's a lot of different I, i've never read these obviously but there's a lot of information in there that talks about meditation and how through meditation you're able to achieve higher states of consciousness which we've been talking about mm -hmm. on the show lately and so much so that through this type of meditation and studying the the vedas that you eventually can aspire to having the ability to do all sorts of, of things that we many people deem impossible to do like levitating teleporting dematerializing rematerializing you know being able to essentially leave your body uh, remote viewing astral projection all of these all of these different things through the practice of transcendental meditation that's so cool to think about so he's he's kind of an expert on on that subject and he's studied it <laughs> extensively yeah, kind of <laughs> he is an expert on that clearly <laughs> mm -hmm. so dr Greer got his bachelor's degree in biology from appalachian state university in 1982 and then later on in 1987 he graduated with his medical degree from james h quillen college of medicine of east tennessee state university so he has a medical license or he did have a medical license uh, he was also a member of the alpha omega alpha honor medical society mm. and so i mean he's clearly a very intelligent guy i mean if you hear him speak he's extremely intelligent i mean you have to be intelligent to be a doctor obviously but he definitely just seems like he's he's on like a higher level of, of consciousness than the rest of us i i think well the dude meditates enough right you think that would help right so in 1990, he went on to found the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or CSETI. And this was basically a research initiative in order to study and learn how to initiate contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. It seems like an important thing. Like we yeah. should have already had that. Right. And maybe we do, but it's secret. Right, exactly. And then a few years later, he founded the Disclosure Project, which this is his real, you know, his real mm -hmm. mission is to disclose all the public information or classified information that the government has on extraterrestrials ufos and other top secret projects which he calls mm -hmm. special access projects or programs and that's what unacknowledged is really focusing on. right the fact that the government 100 percent has special projects going on where they're mm -hmm. doing experiments they're doing they're studying all types of that different tons things tons of money is going into like disgusting amounts yeah we have no idea millions what and millions exactly billions of dollars on. going into mm -hmm. 
and we didn't even know we we have the american public has not known about this for a very long time until recently when finally i think it was bernie sanders who actually was able to get the pentagon to be audited and their budget audited and that's when they realized there's this huge amount of money taxpayer money that's going to these special access projects that we have no clue what they're doing we have no clue what they're studying and that's been happening for a long time a very long time years i mean Mm -hmm. since the beginning pretty much Mm -hmm. so you know you kind of start connecting the dots and you realize okay well if the government has has all this money to study what are they studying and it makes sense that they'd be i mean like we talked about in our last episode Mm -hmm. on the gateway experience and you know uh the department department of defense and what they're studying consciousness and and all those abilities to teleport to astral project i mean it it all makes sense now they're clearly studying this stuff so there's got to be some element of this that's real why the hell would they be spending all this money definitely definitely yeah yeah and that confirms it the money alone and just the amounts of it right right exactly so his whole mission really is to disclose to the public all the information that's out there regarding the extraterrestrial and ufo phenomenon and Mm -hmm. what's actually going on and what isn't being told to us by our governments because for a long time Mm -hmm. i mean the government didn't even acknowledge the existence of area 51 no until bob lazar came out and started talking about area 51 yeah it was a question what is it even real yeah and then yep and then we found out it was real yeah it's interesting with dr greer too it seems like he has he clearly has a lot of power that they take him seriously as well because after the unacknowledged came out a bunch more information came out like it just it started just pouring out at that point because that was such a phenomenon every like so many people saw that yeah millions and millions millions i mean for it to be a top trending movie on netflix netflix has 300 million subscribers i think that's that's huge he reached tons of people and that had some crazy information in it not crazy information you know what i mean like really he had some bombshells in that thing they talked about conspiracy theories i mean he went all over the place in that and really going after the governments Mm -hmm. and and really laying out that the governments are literally lying to you they're literally Mm -hmm. keeping this information Mm-hmm. from the public on purpose and, and it here's the proof 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 here's the proof, proof. yeah and There's... i think it kind of scared them because then yeah. a bunch of stuff came out and then he said as soon as they got word that he was working on fifth encounter or close encounters um they started putting out a bunch of information on just you know their archives releasing documents and making it public before he could release it because he was going to be basically they wanted to get the jump on him so yeah. just, I mean, that tells that validates him a lot more to me. Right. That there was he's literally able a to response. make movements. Yeah, there is definitely a response. Yeah. And I mean, this this started a long time ago. I mean, in 2001, there was UFO disclosure that happened at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. And this was like televised on all the mainstream uh, news site, you know, news t- channels. We're talking CNN, NBC, Fox, mm-hmm. all these channels televised this National Press Club uh, meeting or a press conference where they came forward and they literally laid out, you know, and they had whistleblowers, they had all of these government officials that were coming forward talking about the UFO issue and saying that literally we, you know, we've, they are literally reverse engineering extraterrestrial craft and materials that have been recovered and really started. That was like the first time mm-hmm. that the public was hearing about this, but for whatever reason, I mean, I don't, I clearly don't remember this. I was a kid in 2001. And I doubt our parents even even know no. what this is. I bet you they oh, were no. like, "This happened," Mm-mm. and it oh, did. Yeah. It was on TV and stuff. And Dr. Greer was a was a part of this. And but is it the, headline news at the end of the I night? I don't know. Probably not. No. So this was like the first time that disclosed because everybody's like, "When is alien disclosure going to happen?" And he argues, "Well, it's already happened." Yeah, and We've it's not going to be something where it just is one big announcement. It's a slow rollout. It's in progress. Well, it's controlled. Mm-hmm. it's controlled and the you know the powers that be that's how they want to do it they want to right. control the narrative and they want to control the way that we receive the information because ultimately what it comes down to is there's a debate whether or not you know we know for a fact that ufos are real it's a very real phenomenon it's been tracked it's been recorded it's been seen by all types of people from astronauts to pilots to military personnel to just ordinary individuals i mean we've there's a huge amount of people have seen UFOs and you know, there's lots of connections between them with the types of, of craft that they are 
and there's clearly something to it what what are they mm -hmm. and the way that they maneuver the fact that they're able to literally come in and out of move extremely quick you know this dimension or reality or whatever you want to call it instantaneously and then disappear and, and be gone and just materialize dematerialize right. quickly right mm -hmm. and so you know the debate is well do we need to be worried about these things are these things a threat or are these things coming in peace and and who is piloting these things if anything is piloting them that is i think one of the most interesting debates going on in this community right now is are aliens a threat or are they not are they these highly intelligent peaceful beings that have no need to be a threat because they are so advanced that there right. is no need right that they're beyond that they're highly evolved right or they're not and they're just want to take over everyone they can every right. other being in the universe right there's that huge split like people feel i'm let's run a poll on our twitter because i'm really curious just you know what do you guys think do you do you think, aliens are friend or foe yeah friend or foe <laughs> Or is it like a mix? Do you think there's yeah. some good and some bad? Yeah. That's kind of how I feel personally. But yeah, Dr. Greer, I tend to want to believe Dr. Greer because he's really on the side of their friends. And the threat thing is just from the government, basically, to scare you. Well, and, and it's it comes back to the military industrial complex and how mm -hmm. powerful that machine is. And ultimately, he believes that there's going to be a huge interplanetary war and that's like the next thing that's going to happen and likely sooner than later and what what's actually happening is it's a completely staged event where mm -hmm. we are you know we end up fighting these aliens that are in fact not real extraterrestrial beings from other star systems and in fact these are you know military created whether they're mm -hmm. military created beings or they're military created craft that we end up fighting saying that we're fighting this interplanetary war yeah. because you know the military industrial complex constantly wants to be at war that's what feeds it mm -hmm. and so what's going to be that next threat because we literally do make so much money off of war and yeah. unacknowledged explains that too yeah it explains how we've done this and stayed in this perpetual state of war and always making an enemy for the american people to hate or people whatever right and yeah, is this going to be the next thing that we are taught to be afraid of so that they can control us because what does right. fear do you know, it gives them control. Yeah. So obviously it's it's a nice idea to think that that all could be fake. And it, it makes me, I mean, I do want to believe Dr. Greer that all beings are so evolved that they're these kind, you know. Yeah. Well, it's theory they come is in like, peace, basically. If they're smart enough to be able to traverse space and time right. across, across the universe, then aren't they far enough evolved their consciousness far enough evolved that they understand this yeah. universal you know field i mean he really lays out basically that the force is real you know and like in star wars he referred to the force well there's mm -hmm. this force universal consciousness is the other term for it that we're all connected into and higher level consciousness beings are far enough evolved that they don't see any need for death destruction and 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 all of that because there's abundant amount of resources in the universe mm -hmm. you can you know once you fit you get to that level of consciousness you, just, there's no need the problems go away right and see that i like dr greer's theory on that and i tend to want to believe him over everyone else in the community because that sounds <laughs> that sounds so nice it helps my anxiety but it also line aligns with my personal beliefs and how i felt about it for a long time even before i heard dr greer saying that i've always thought aliens have got to be way too intelligent to actually want to fight us you know if they're they've got to be so beyond that so it kind of just aligns with how i already felt which i'm like is it just convenient to believe that is it naive to believe that because maybe maybe they're not i mean we have no idea well he if you would listen respond to other people tom DeLong, for well, example he doesn't necessarily say that different. they're a th he doesn't actually say that aliens mm, are a threat he but he pretty much does he implies that which we'll get that to that in a second i want to yeah, i want to sorry i'm jumping ahead no no, no i want to talk I about this, this for a second that his response to that would be if they were you know they have every capability to wipe us out and to take us over if that was their intention mm -hmm. and that was they, would have they were truly it. evil or they had some malicious you know intention towards us they would have already done it so why haven't they done it which is a great argument but then you know, you could 
go down that that rabbit hole and say well is it possible that governments of the earth or some unknown group has been in, in cahoots with these extraterrestrials and kind of keep them at bay because they're all working together in conjunction with one another and obviously there's no proof of that unless you look at you know that that recent report from the israeli guy who's saying that there's a there's an alliance I'm a shed. yeah there's an alliance of extraterrestrials and earth's government so that would make sense in, in that way that there's an agreement and that they just they don't do anything because there's some sort of council or you know treaty like allies yeah basically. exactly it makes a lot of sense too mm-hmm I kind of feel like if they're advanced enough to come all the way this way, then they're advanced enough to have what, like, what do we have that they don't? Right. right. Nothing. Yeah. Like, what is mm-hmm. it? Why would our they oil? waste? Right. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. would they waste our time on us? Yeah. And what, I mean, some people make the argument, maybe they want to like enslave us yeah. and make us work for what? For money? So they can but get I feel like, like money from our planet. It doesn't, wouldn't work mm-hmm. anywhere else. Like they're smart, but I feel like it, again, you're smart enough to like literally create robots right. to do everything like why would you come all this way for you think your intelligence would be beyond yeah i completely agree with that i think most people will agree with that yeah i mean it makes complete sense so to go back to this idea of you know let's let's focus on the threat aspect for a minute here so if we think of ufos and aliens as a threat let's let's look at that a little bit more so this has been a narrative that according to Dr. Greer and there's declassified documents, CIA documents that prove this, that they, this has been a narrative that's been in place with the government since, you know, Roswell cold war times. I mean, there's literally documents saying this is what's happening. And actually there's a really interesting clip of Ronald Reagan giving a speech in 1987 to the United Nations general assembly. And yeah. listen to what he says here. Great clip. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how she unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war? and the threat of war very interesting for the time to say that huh really interesting yeah I mean, and i mean if you believe in project blue beam which is the idea of a faked threat you kind of think hmm has it been in place for a long time did he just kind of explain it and kind of start setting it up because you know who also always said that pretty much exact same quote bill clinton that was always like his go-to and people ask him about aliens it's like well imagine if there was a threat yeah. We would all be, we'd all come together faster than ever. And I used to think, like, right. well, yeah, that's so true. That's so deep. We would bond. But now I'm like, hmm. Well, it's, it's hard because the, if you dig down, you know, into that, that whole idea a little bit more, what you're, what you're talking about is, you know, the world coming together to form a, a one government, mm-hmm. one, you know, coming together as humans to basically work together and to remove all the boundaries and, and borders in order to, you know, unite against this alien threat. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, a lot of people look at it a couple different ways. One, you know, that sounds a lot like this whole new world order idea, Mm -hmm. you know, the whole conspiracy aspect of it, that the ultimate goal of the elite or the powers that be that they want to, it's the ultimate way to control us is to centralize everything into one, one government and be Mm -hmm. super easy to rule over the people of earth in that way. And, you know, when they look at that, that's kind of what they're seeing is they're seeing all the UN, all the leaders of the world coming together saying, hey, you know what? Here's one excuse for us to unite together as people as if mm. aliens attack. So the way Dr. Greer perceives that is that this is like planting that seed mm-hmm. of that. Well, we need this new world order. We need it in order to come together as people and in order to fight off any threats that Earth might face. It's it's hard because it's so conflicting, Right. Like on one hand, Dr. Greer says that and that this could be this threat and whatever, it's this fake thing. But also he said, he brings up the Carter's upscale in this documentary in Close Encounters, he brought it up. Mm -hmm. And that the first step of the Carter's upscale, we've talked about it so many times, I'm sure you guys are bored of hearing about it, but it's pretty interesting. There's this hypothetical scale called the Carter's upscale about humanity advancing and to be considered a type one civilization, you have to essentially be one world 
power. That's all connected. One government, one language, one currency, according to the Kardashev scale. So we aren't even, we don't even register on the Kardashev scale. We're well, not zero. Only, right. And, and not only that, I mean, in he, Dr. Greer puts forth that, well, we do need, need to unite as people. Mm-hmm. You know, there is this universal consciousness that we all are a part of, and therefore we all need to wake up and realize that and unite as human beings. But it's, it's not uniting under the banner of, you know, our governments and, you know, our countries, but being rather controlled. uniting as a human race and, elim- and being able to eliminate the people at the top. We don't need these leaders. We don't need these people to tell us what to do or how to live. But in fact, if we all come together and you don't think we need leaders raise our conscience. No, I That's don't. That's an interesting thought. You I don't, don't think we I do. don't think we need leaders. I really oh, don't. Tell me more. Well, I, no I, leaders. Th- I think there's a, if you look back and you look at, you know, even species of animals, like, they, you know, some, an- some types of animals do have some sort of leadership type roles within their, mm-hmm. you know, lions and things like that. They have, you know, the leader of the pride and things like that. But in essence, everybody's an equal in a lot of ways because everybody contributes, everybody plays, you know, plays a role. So what is, you know, what are they really there for at all? It's to, you know, have a government in order to provide support and blah, 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 blah. But that's gotten twisted along the way. And now it's become Mm -hmm. a control mechanism where they can manipulate and control the mass amount of people on the planet. So if you remove all that and we all look at each other the same and, but in doing that, we need to all wake up and raise our consciousness for that to work that's the problem we're too primitive (laughs) we're too primitive as a species in order to for that idea to work right now so that's the idea no because right now i mean we're all there's a lot of you know people that are just not quite quite there yet on the evolution scale where if the governments were to fall apart it'd just be chaos and violence Mm -hmm. and it'd be just it'd be like the apocalypse you know yes and some people i think just could not handle the idea of right the truth about everything they need that structure mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but once you realize who you really are and what we really are and that none of you know our bodies matter none of our you know all of this superficial stuff we we deal with on a daily basis becomes irrelevant and we realize that there's a universal consciousness that we can all tap into and there's you know unlock mm-hmm. the secrets of of the universe and technologies that have been suppressed then therefore we would be able to rise as a society and I'm, become more advanced, much like these extraterrestrial civilizations out there. I don't know if I agree, to be honest, that we could ever not have a leader. I don't know if humans are capable of ever getting to that point. But what if you were able to, but imagine a more evolved human being where their mm-hmm. consciousness, where people stop thinking about themselves yeah, and I guess. start thinking about. We're gonna have to meditate others. a lot to get there, <laughs> right? Well, that's what he's his idea. People don't care, right? His idea is that the days. more that people mm-hmm. raise their consciousness, the more that's going to affect the rest of the population, mm-hmm. and make people realize that no, we don't need leaders. We don't need these people telling us how to live or, or what mm-hmm. to do. We don't need the government to tell us how to communicate with extraterrestrials or what the actual deal is with them. That we can figure that out for ourselves. And here's how. <laughs> Wow. I mean, it's a dream. It is a dream. I want to know if people agree, if you think that there could be a world without leadership or do we just feel like it reminds me of the Hunger Games. We were just watching the whole Hunger Games series and, you know, they kill off the president and then they kill off the second runner up. And it's like, well, do we need a president? Do they need someone to be in charge? Like, can you even have a society that functions without some type of system like that? Or does it all just get too chaotic? At the current scale, no, you need a leader. Hmm. But if you get to a type one civilization where, because imagine like the reason why we have so many different systems in place is so that we can make sure people get the things that they need. But if there was a way that everybody could have unlimited supply of the things they need, then what you don't need anybody to control that. You don't need anybody to tell you how much food you can have, how much energy you, you can use. You know, all of these different things are in place because they're telling us there's a limited supply because the limitations of that allow them to control the people. Yeah. If we had free, clean energy. Right. So that's what we're getting to is that on the flip side, when you have the governments and especially these powerful military industrial complexes in place, 
they're the ones that hold the power because not only do they hold the power to obliterate the planet military but we rely know, militarily on but they also food energy they give us life in a lot of ways that's true but you know th their narrative with all mm -hmm. of this is that we need to be worried about what's outside our planet because it could potentially be a threat and they're going to protect us yeah right and that's why we need all these weapons that's why we need to spend billions of dollars on defense programs is because we need to be ready for that next threat and that next threat is not going to be on earth it's going to be something outside of earth and that's where you know if you go back to 2017 when unacknowledged came out shortly after in december that's when to the stars Academy of Arts and Science came into play, which is co-founded by former Blink-182 uh, lead singer Tom DeLonge, mm -hmm. along with a cast of high-ranking ex-military uh, officials, CIA officials, scientists, who came forward and said, all right, we're going to be the authority now that tells Earth about UFOs. Mm -hmm. And they've had exclusive government footage released to them to then release to the public. The so there's been a lot of there's a lot of, you know, concern about Tom, which is interesting. I think when it first happened, we were very intrigued by everything we was doing. We, he was doing, and we did an episode back then. It would be kind of interesting to dive back into into the stars now that it's been going for a few years, and we have some we have thoughts on it. And they haven't which is done. Hard they haven't done that much. I love Tom. I'm a huge Tom DeLonge fan. But. And I think, <laughs> and I think Tom, unfortunately, is kind of a puppet in all this. I kind of do too, man. Because the way he way. presented it was like, oh well, you know, I got contacted by these generals of the military. He that, has a specific narrative. Because, and I don't know if that's necessarily his personal thoughts on it. I think he got excited about this prospect of being able to. Yeah. I mean, he's been a big UFO forever. Uh, you know, fan and researcher for mm -hmm. a long time, and, and he's written books, fictional books machines. about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's been very interested in the subject. Yeah. So when he got this opportunity to start this company mm -hmm. and also team up he with all these the really things. smart people, yeah, and kind of be the you know he believes he's a part of something that's going to change the world, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to change the world maybe, but is it going to change it for the right reasons, and is it going to be the truth, mm -hmm. or are we going to get fed? a narrative that isn't true in order to make us all believe mm -hmm. what you know because at the end of the day the people involved with this are part of these organizations we're talking about you know the defense agencies the mm -hmm. you know intelligence agencies you know all these agencies who were classifying all this information for years and now all of a sudden they're like okay we'll start spoon feeding the public on what's going on and you know they released those two videos mm -hmm. of you know navy pilots seeing these ufos on their uh they're like little radar screens and stuff and it's like you know bite-sized like pieces it is it is yeah and what's interesting about into the stars too which a lot of people don't know is that it's also a media company it's supposed to be so they're supposed to be creating content around ufos and, movies and films yeah, yeah trying to like slowly bring the public's awareness to and, it and tom thinks that they're bringing the public the truth which we don't know. We have no way no, to know no whether knows. or not what the truth is on the subject. But but no one, they can't both be right. Dr. Right. Greer and Tom DeLonge's stories and ideas of everything completely conflict. Right. So. And then we found, you know, we found out that, you know, after years and years and years of the government denying the existence of UFOs, we found out that, oh, lo and behold, one of the guys oh. that's head of the, the To The Stars Academy, Lou Elizondo, he yeah. was the actual program director of this pentagon program called advanced aerial Identifica uh, identification threat program advanced aerial identification threat program <laughs> aatip i think is what it is mm -hmm. aaitp or something like that <laughs> <Whatever>. something <laughs> like that along those lines but it was this program that right in the name says threat and mm -hmm. i mean and and sometimes I think people get a little carried away because they're not like, these are threats, these are, but they are implying that it may be a threat. And the reason why they were studying it was because these there's unknown objects flying in military restricted airspace that they have no idea what it is. And from their experience, these are things that seem to not be of this world and even have implied they have materials that they've recovered that to the stars has little extraterrestrial yeah, materials that they have no clue where it came from mm -hmm. or it's not made of anything known to this planet and they're researching it and also basically implying that they have been 
looking into anti-gravity technology, basically confirming what Dr. Greer has been saying all along, that the military after Roswell, they in fact did get extraterrestrial craft. They got this craft. Yep. And this Bob was Lazar. Bob's, yeah, which is what I was about to say. Bob's been saying it. And eh, come on. I believe Bob. They recovered alien craft. They likely recovered alien bodies, whoever mm-hmm. was piloting these craft. And since the 50s, 40s, 50s, the government has been back engineering this technology and therefore they now have that technology and they're not releasing it or, or proving it to us yet. But that's what to the stars is saying is that with time, we're going to show you guys amazing things. Mm-hmm. We're going to show you this cool stuff that's going to blow your minds. This anti-gravity technology where you're able to bend and warp space time, which is how these crafts actually fly around. In the well then where do. is it where's the can right. we see some shit like it's been, it's been years, a while tom let's go i know it's been a couple the years fuck, and there's tom, been we much. need better intro topics like come on <laughs> seriously tom get him on the show uh, oof. well remember when oh, you went on joe sweet. rogan we watched that yeah yeah and mm, it's very interesting that whole interview was so interesting i said su- i highly suggest watching it because you can tell joe rogan was like extremely skeptical of him mm-hmm. and the whole thing but he really loves dr greer Mm, I think he's pretty skeptical of Dr. Greer actually. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. When I saw him, he was he wasn't, going on and on mm, about him, but that he hasn't had him back on and and Oh, I never saw his actual He did an with interview him. with him a while ago. It's been like seven years or something, but mm. he hasn't had him ever even after unacknowledged, he didn't have him on. And and he didn't know about it. Remember mm. Steven oh, right. Tyler? Steven Tyler from right. Aerosmith. I remember that now, yeah. Fucking told Joe Rogan about yeah. he was like, Have you seen Unacknowledged? Yeah, and he's, he's like, like, Yeah, you gotta watch no. Unacknowledged. Which is interesting because Joe Rogan is very interested in the subject and he mm-hmm. does have a lot. But I think Joe Rogan's, I mean, he's a very skeptical dude and yeah. rightfully so. And he's had a lot of scientists and, mm-hmm. you know, he's had Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's, you know, very skeptical about UFOs alien, and stuff right. and that aliens are here. So I think his mind's been filled with a lot of, you know, academic people and really, you know, people that approach things very rationally. And so he's kind of split mm-hmm. on the issue. But I he also had that. Bob Lazar on. He yeah, had Bob Lazar on a show and mm-hmm. and talked about it, and I think Bob Lazar having Bob Lazar on and hearing his whole story and what he worked on at Area Fifty One really kind of like solidified that. Okay, you know, I think Joe Rogan absolutely believes in UFOs. I think he believes in aliens and all that, but I think he's skeptical, especially about the idea of communicating mm-hmm. with aliens and that there's anybody on this planet that's actually been with one. That's understandable. I'm skeptical about that too. I mean, I believe in aliens 1000%, but I don't know quite, you know, are they really among us? I don't know. Haven't seen enough for myself, but God, it would be great to interview Dr. Greer. I wish we could get him on the show. And I think we can. We've literally like talked to his agent before, but we don't have good Wi-Fi in our studio, guys. Yeah, it's we're jank in here. We're working on that because, yeah, mm-hmm. well, we, I know we've covered him so much. It's like, why don't we just have I know, him on and, and he literally said he would. Tell his, yeah, we so, just can't do. Even Gabby Hanna has had uh, Dr. Greer now. Right. We got to well, catch will, up. We will have him on hopefully in the near future, you know? whether it's in person or it's a, a remote interview. But yeah, that would be great. I think I think you guys would really enjoy that. And I would really enjoy it because if you haven't heard him, then, you know, I think it does help kind of create, mm-hmm. you know, give you some more validation maybe on, mm-hmm. on some of the things that we're talking about. So the other thing that I think we really should dive into a little bit is and was a huge component of the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind documentary was just the science of consciousness and sort of Dr. Greer's approach to it and his views on it and how that correlates with his CE5 protocols and how in fact do you communicate with these extraterrestrials. So before we get into that, we want to thank our last sponsors for today. So these days, so many products are considered smart. You know, we have our phones, our cars, speakers, TVs, even refrigerators are smart. And now you can have smart cat litter. That's right, Smart Litter. It's called Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter is the most advanced litter that we've ever seen. It changes colors to help detect early signs of potential illnesses, including urinary tract infections and kidney issues. And as a cat owner, I can tell you that this is so helpful. We have three cats and cats tend to hide when they're in pain or if something's going on. So this really gives you that early warning so that you can you know, basically take care of them preventatively. Just seeing the litter detector be the correct color makes us have a sense of peace of mind at the end of the day. And it makes cleanup even easier because they have this ultra absorbent crystals in their litter that trap odor instantly and they last up to a month. 
Plus, Pretty Litter is not only safer for your cat, but it's also safer for the whole household because many conventional litters contain irritants that can aggravate allergies and asthma. But Pretty Litter's super light crystal base minimizes mess and dust. And it arrives safely to your door in a small, lightweight bag, which is awesome. So do what we did and make the switch over to Pretty Litter today by visiting prettylitter.com and using the promo code MILEHIGHER for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com with promo code MILEHIGHER for 20% off. PrettyLitter.com, promo code MileHigher. If you have multiple credit cards, I know I did when I first started out, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and website logins can be stressful. And it's easy for your credit card debt to get out of control. But with Upstart, they make things simple by giving you one monthly payment all in one place. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. With Upstart, they find you smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score, which is amazing. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. Best of all, you can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as one business day later. If debt is taking over your life, get debt-free and get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash mile higher. That's upstart.com slash mile higher. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Again, check out Upstart today at upstart.com slash mile higher. Do you believe that it's possible for our minds to have control over matter in any way, shape or form? So it'd be anything around us in the physical world. Like mind over matter, on, literally? Yeah, literally mind over matter. Where mind is more powerful than everything around us. And that we, our consciousness is capable of altering the very fabric of our reality on the quantum level. So but to simplify that, we're talking about consciousness and, and the idea that consciousness is obviously this mystery. We don't know exactly where it lies. We don't know exactly what it even is. But what we do know is that consciousness, you know, is a very powerful thing. And our consciousness is obviously tied into, you know, the quantum level of of everything. I mean, it's clearly tied into, you know, whether you want to call it dimensions or the fabric of, of reality, there's a connection there. And through that, are we able to put forth intentions towards something and have it actually have an, a physical effect on that thing? Or manifestation or right i mean yeah. i personally believe yeah you could I've seen absolutely it in my own manifestation life. yep so you're putting these intentions out into the universe as we say mm-hmm. and things happen speaking it into existence right not mm-hmm. necessarily on the spot or immediately but with time if you you know if you believe in manifestation those things are going to come mm-hmm. come to you eventually and it may not be the way that you think it's going to come to you but just that very thought of of you know, wanting that thing or wanting something to happen, are you in fact affecting something mm-hmm. along the line that is putting that into motion for you? A lot of people would say no, but other people would say yes. I say yes, personally. Because I mean, I there's there's been it. studies that are really interesting where people have been able to shift random number generators with just their thoughts and it's a good study because a random number generator is an example of a quantum process and people with just using their intentions were able to actually shift the outcome which is really interesting it kind of it definitely kind of proves this idea that you know we are able to make things happen at the quantum level Mm -hmm. just using our minds and this was this was really interesting um because this is all kind of ties into the ce5 protocols and how you you know contact extraterrestrials and how just basically all other life in the universe intelligent life in the universe interacts with one another we're all plugged into the you know the fabric of reality the quantum level of the universe i mean we're talking the very core foundation of what makes up everything so another person that's done some research on this whole mind matter connection is a Dr. Masaru Emoto. And I'm pretty sure we've actually talked about the experiments that he did in our water episode, right? 
I don't remember. So his experiment is basically, if you look at the structures of water molecules and you know as they crystallize, depending on the actual intentions or emotions that are put forward towards this water molecule, it will crystallize in a different way, depending on if it's positive or a negative emotion, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of controversy with this because people think this is just like pseudoscience. Like there's not really, I, I think there's some, you know, debate on whether this is really scientific or not. But I mean, they have microscopic images of this. Right, right. There's proof. Right. It's pretty interesting stuff. I don't know if we did talk about it in our water episode, him specifically, but we did talk about the concept. Right. So if you look at these pictures, basically you're seeing water molecules, you know, with emotions like compassion put forward towards them or thank you, saying thank you to the water or wisdom. And what you see as a result is the crystals form into these beautiful uh, geometric shapes as you would imagine they would, I guess. Almost like a snowflake. Yeah, exactly. Where on the other hand, if you put forward negative emotions towards the water, play heavy metal music or say, I will kill you or you fool, you get just kind of this jumbled mess. Interesting. So, I mean, I think That's you really take cool. that with a grain of salt, but it is cool if that is in fact true, that you can have an effect over things on you know the molecular level, which is pretty cool. So all of that research and evidence kind of goes into Dr. Greer's whole CE5 initiative. So when we say close encounters of the fifth kind, we're talking about five different levels of close encounters actually. The first kind of encounter is just a visual sighting of a UFO. The second kind would be some sort of physical evidence, such as impressions on the ground or scorch marks or crop crop circles, mm -hmm. oftentimes associated with UFO sightings. The third kind would actually be seeing the occupants of the particular spacecraft or UFO. The fourth kind would be where a human is actually brought on board the spacecraft. And then the fifth kind is human initiated communication with extraterrestrials, so interstellar communication. So that leads us to how exactly do you do the CE5 protocol? And a lot, there is an app actually out there called uh, CE5 uh, that Dr. Greer put out. And of course we were like, oh, he's just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's $10 or whatever, but honestly, well, that's a lot. yeah, I, I bought it. To talk to alien. You did? Yeah, I bought it. It's actually a pretty cool app. Oh, can I see it? It's got Hold a lot up. on it. I want to see it. I don't even have my phone with me right now, oh, but damn. we'll, we'll put some, some, uh, pictures on the screen some footage of the app have you played with it yet or yeah. done anything with it yeah he has like guided meditations because at the root of the ce5 protocols is obviously meditation you want to find somewhere quiet to sit oftentimes it helps to have multiple people come together because it's more powerful that way if you come together somewhere quiet you want to go out somewhere usually into a space where there's no you know other sounds or possible forms of interference that could, you know, you might mistake for a UFO or alien for that matter. Right. And once you do, that's when you start doing meditation. So with the app, he actually has guided meditations that he does recordings of Dr. Greer leading you in these meditations. And a lot of his, um, a lot of his methods are all kind of sourced from the, the Vedas and this, there's a ceremony he does called the puja which is something Ooh, yeah. that's been done for a very long time. Yeah, very cool. Mm. And it's all very, very ancient knowledge and forms of meditation that he does. And basically what you do is this whole mind over matter. You literally mm. meditate, you get yourself to that space, and then you call out. You literally put your intentions out there, like, please come visit Almost us. telepathically. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of put those those words out and into the universe and hope somebody hears them mm. telepathically i guess you know that maybe that your vibration becomes strong enough that it can be heard right up. can your call be heard out there mm. and what he's proven and shown through the ce5 expeditions and especially when he's along because obviously he's going to be 
you know, far more advanced in this, this, these protocols that he's developed than the average person is. Mm -hmm. Cause you do, you know, it is very much based in meditation and being able to raise your awareness and your consciousness to a level where you can actually, you know, get on that same wavelength with some of these beings that are out there. And meditation really does take a lot of practice to get to that type right. of level where right. you can actually clear, you know, time that long and get into that state for a period of time. God, I mean, it's hard to do. It yeah. is really hard to do. Like I struggle even to do a meditation past like 20 minutes. It's right. normally my breaking point at the absolute longest time. Yeah. So it's hard to do yeah. hour, do yeah. hours at a time. Mm -hmm. Like that takes a lot of serious practice. Yeah. And so that's, that's essentially what they do when we're talking about these close encounter with fifth kind expeditions that Dr. Greer does. He basically goes out with a group of individuals who are interested in, and in doing this and they get together and he leads you in this meditation you know he does this puja ceremony and that's when things start to happen and there's been tons of people who've been on these expeditions that have seen some really really cool stuff including demi lovato yeah we yeah just talked about her recently demi and the des yep demi went out mm -hmm. on expedition and she came back with photographic evidence too yeah of some some orbs that she saw yeah we'll put it in some pictures. very interesting things so i mean that's a if you take Demi Lovato seriously or think she has an ounce mm -hmm. of credibility, I mean, is she lying? Probably not. Why would she be lying? Right. Why would anyone lie about something like this? Yeah, it seems like, yeah, if you, mm, that'd be, that'd be pretty strange <laughs> career move for her to like completely be but, out there faking all this. When Josh saying like, why would anyone lie about that? I don't know. I'm, I think people would lie. Some people like, would, but you think attention. all of these people could no. be lying? Oh, I don't think everyone's, everyone's lying. No, 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 no. But like but maybe some like, people there. I think a lot of people would be like, "Yeah, sure, you saw it." Like, I mean, yeah, I don't you don't want to be the one in the group who didn't see. So it's like, yeah, I saw what everyone else saw. But also like faking evidence, like faking photographs. Like it's very, it's more rare that somebody who's lying about having an experience or an encounter like this goes and then creates a bunch of fake photographs, fake videos. But what's really the point? Like, do you, I know sometimes hoaxers make money, but it's very rare to actually make money off of a hoax. And what would Demi Lovato have? Like, what would her reasoning to... Oh, yeah, I'm not saying she's right? lying. No, I know. I'm just saying in general, people that don't believe her, you mm. know? Why would she... God, I mean, this is a... She's a very famous person with a huge career on the yeah. line. And for her to yeah. come out and say that she believes in this and has seen it firsthand, it's done it, it's pretty huge. I doubt she's just making it all up, you know? So, yeah, if you discount Dr. Greer's CE5s, you kind of have to discount everyone who's had these experiences. And that's kind of hard to do. I mean, the more... And the more you hear, like in, in this documentary, you hear a lot of people's stories and it just, I mean, I don't, yeah. these people aren't coming across to me as liars. No. And for what? No. For what? Well, and in one case, there is an individual who was on a C5 expedition mm -hmm. and he actually was, I think he was deaf mm -hmm. and he had hearing aids and one night they were out there and he had this like red orb just show up and he was like one of the only ones to witness this and he asked kindly to whatever this thing was to you know if you were able to help me and able to heal my hearing can you do it please mm -hmm. and lo and behold and he ended up having this whole experience where it this thing was like getting bigger and like almost like responding to him telepathically mm -hmm. Uh, having this really weird experience and then he went to bed that night like normal and the next morning he woke up he forgot to put his hearing aids in and he went to breakfast with the rest of the group mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he realized that he could hear everybody at the table and even multiple tables uh, farther away and he was like whoa I don't have my insane literally healed but so how do we know that's like 100 percent true you don't you, you don't. don't you have you to don't. believe this guy's story I mean and why would he be out here saying that he right. To support I mean, Dr. Greer, maybe sure, but yeah, okay. I guess you can make that argument. Maybe he's like paid off by Dr. Greer. Right, to that's say what that. people say. I mean, it's a huge claim. It's like wow. And normally, I don't believe that type of thing, and it's I struggle with it. But like this dude literally doesn't wear his hearing aids anymore. Yeah. I mean, why is why would he do this? And is he just faking it? He literally showed his hearing aids and what he was yeah. wearing, and I mean, and I don't know. That's that is. That is a huge claim to say I was healed by an alien. Like <laughs> I'm or, sure some of our audience is like, ah, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's tough. That's a big, big claim. It is. And, and there's apparently a picture of 
one of these, Dr. Greer calls them master healers. And the picture is an enhanced photo uh, that was taken because what they do is they set up a bunch of cameras at these CE5s and, mm -hmm. and oftentimes in just the, the raw photo, there's nothing in it. But you have to enhance it with different filters and different things like that. And you actually start seeing shit, Make which people say, yeah. oh, well, you know, you start manipulating photos. How do we know mm -hmm. what if that's actually there? And you don't know. You don't. But some of the images he's captured do kind of look kind of interesting. I mean, the one of the master healer, it looks kind of like a almost like it reminds me of like a praying mantis type type being. If you look at it, it's got kind of a, a triangle shaped head in a way. Yeah. It looks like it's got little arms. And apparently this was the master healer that happened to be at the group uh, that that previous night, I believe, and may have been the the being that healed this guy. And so very controversial i mean people mm -hmm. are gonna people are a lot of people are just like oh that's just a bunch of bullshit like how do we know there's it. no way to know and and you should be somewhat skeptical of it mm -hmm. and i guess you really remain skeptical until you go and experience this firsthand mm -hmm. and in in the film i mean the last 30 minutes of it is just tons of of people talking about their experiences and even people that weren't with dr greer having experiences just using his protocols uh, and following the app and I mean it's not like the app just like calls in the aliens for you like you you do still have to do the work it's not like you you know yeah that definitely does dial sound a number it's like it. the TikTok trend now it's like hey guys I'm gonna be calling in the aliens like <laughs> see what comes up on my yeah right <laughs> yeah oh, it still requires it's definitely got work. a kind of strange feel to it though you know mm -hmm. download this alien app to contact the aliens yeah like, it sounds crazy <laughs> it, it really does. does sound crazy um but I don't know I want I would love to go on a CE5. Dr. Greer, take us all on a CE5. Well, he us used to go. do them in Crestone, Colorado, yeah. which we've all stayed yeah, in Crestone. Yeah, we love Crestone. So cool. It's right mm -hmm. by Hooper, Colorado, which is, uh, there's actually a UFO like memorial there, like yeah, a tower sweet. there. <laughs> and uh, that whole valley, the San Luis Valley in... Uh, San Luis. San Luis Valley, sorry, in Colorado mm -hmm. is a UFO hotspot. Like there's yeah. just tons and tons of sightings over the years. Kinda near the sand dunes. And mm -hmm. some of the evidence he shows in the film was actually captured in Crestone, Colorado, which is really cool. I hope I hope he comes back to Colorado one day, and I'd yeah. love to go on one with him. Sure, he will. I really hope so. But let's let's before we wrap things up, let's look at some of the evidence that was put forward uh, by Dr. Greer. So some really really cool stuff. So here's a clip from Vero Beach, Florida, from February 2015, and it's pretty cool what they captured. So what I'd like to discuss now is an overview of the uh, consciousness, the science of consciousness, specifically as it applies to uh, training in meditation and the phases of development for remote viewing and doing the coherent thought sequencing. So you have a very clear understanding of it. What is that orange, orange, orange object? Look how beautiful. Oh, whoa. Oh, my God. Whoa, whoa just don't, don't, don't pop too up, much. Please. Crouch down and look because you'll block our cameras. Wow. Those behind me may move and stand up. Cause... Okay, that, you see that color? Yeah. That's not a plane. No, no. Oh, no. That's not a boat. No, that's, that's so a ship. So let's thank them for coming. Wow, and it's above the sea Please level. Please turn off your night scope, Charles. Off. Someone's infrared or whatever. Yeah, that's Charles. Oh. Oh, whoa. Oh, here they come. There are two. Whoever's right in the front, if you can kind of just stay low, because your low. head is right. You can get on your knees in front yeah. of you. Look at this, how gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm looking with the night scopes. There's no smoke. There's no trails. These are not flares. And oh my goodness! Okay, let's welcome them here. Oh, they're so they're, beautiful. They they were waiting for us to arrive. Whoa! Jacques, please photograph. Yeah, all okay. cameras should be filming. So connect to them in your consciousness and invite them here. These are the golden ones I talked about. See how gold yeah. are, because the horizon is only seven to 10 miles then on the conditions, so. 
It's probably a couple miles. Everybody wow. see them? Yeah. yeah, they're so beautiful. Let's welcome their uh, beings on board to join us in meditation. That is such a beautiful color. So you'll never forget that color. Yeah, this is a major event. So we are grateful. So open your heart chakra and send them the beauty of humanity. And if you uh, can see what I'm doing, you connect with your palms out like this and your third eye and your heart making like a tetrahedron radiating our pureness and love towards them. They emerge from the sky, but they're very, very close to the ocean. They're just hovering. That's pretty amazing evidence. I mean, that's, I don't know how you really like refute well, yeah. that. Yeah, you can't really insane. fake that. That would I mean, seem pretty anything, legit. If anything, you can argue that it's something else. I mean, they slowed it down so you could see it a little bit better, but. Imagine literally being there and seeing, I would be like, holy shit. I know, I'd be freaking <laughs> out. So is that just a coincidence that those showed up out of nowhere, literally manifested right above the ocean like that? Or did this, you know, CE5 protocols bring them in? Yeah, I mean, it's like, is he just lucky in seeing this stuff? I, I don't know. I certainly don't have the answers. I'd like to experience this for myself. I would so love to go on mm -hmm. one of these and just see yeah. no, I know. what we can conjure up. That sounds kind of bad, huh? Conjure. Yeah, I was going to say, don't say <laughs> that. We're not trying to conjure <laughs> demons, Kendall, okay? Like, no, I know. But If we want to do that, I know exactly the oh, way to do that. Oh, my God, no. Come join me on Lights Out. No, uh, dude. At the Ouija board. Uh. I just, I don't know. It's it's just, it's tough. But I have seen some videos that are similar to that, where it almost looks like a second sun. And I've seen other people reacting the same way. Like, what is this? And Well, so it, what's maybe, interesting, if you heard in that clip, he says these are the golden ones. Mm -hmm. it, it was like a, as if he had already Seen. met He's them like, before. We were talking about or I was talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He clearly like knew that that was going to happen in some sense. Like he either. Yeah, he didn't seem super shocked. To mm -hmm. see them. No, he was like, oh, they're here. Mm -hmm. Welcome them. You know, let's try to connect with them. And I think a lot of skeptics would watch that and be like, this is fucking. <laughs> This guy's out of his mind. Yeah. Like, what is he talking about? The golden ones acting like he's having a chit chat with these aliens and he's just telling the rest of the group about but maybe he really is. That's the thing is you just don't know. You yeah, just you don't really know. Don't. Let's look at some other evidence here. This okay. this is this stuff is pretty interesting. Some of the different images he's captured. We were in France and this thing flashed in. This is me and this way about 60 people. There was an admiral in the military minister of defense who was there incognito. And this strange ghost-like thing partially materialized. You see people turning around. It was visible with the naked eye. It was not fully there. I had a puja table set up over here, which is I do a Sanskrit ceremony where I do Sanskrit and, and then I do a puja and we meditate and it puts people into a state of consciousness uh, that is very cosmic and that's when they appear. So they always arrive for the puja. I believe Sanskrit actually came from another star system. That's really interesting. The puja, man. Mm -hmm. The puja sounds is the key. like the way. Which is interesting because it kind of makes a lot of sense. I mean, if there's anybody that knows, you know, the true nature of the universe and probably the secrets, and <laughs> right? if there's aliens or not, it was probably, mm -hmm. you know, an ancient culture like that going all the way back to uh, the Hindus. Well, and they could have even had contact. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's, I mean, you you're kind of going down the ancient aliens route there. And maybe there is a lot of validity to that, that these ancient cultures were in contact with mm -hmm. other beings from other other worlds. And, and just so. the fact that they were so in tune with their consciousness right. and meditation and they understood how important this was so long ago, it just right. shows you this we've clearly lost touch as a right. society as a whole. And a lot of people believe that's on purpose, that we, mm -hmm. we actually were that makes sense. highly intelligent conscious beings at one point. And as you know, we've, gone through time and things have modernized and you know governments have come into place we've we've declined immensely and hopefully we're experiencing a second awakening right now but the other thing i wanted to bring up too way. is that he was talking about how these things you know materialize and dematerialize and how oftentimes what we're actually seeing is is them not fully materializing into you know our our three-dimensional world 
And in fact, we're seeing, you know, them kind of in between dimensions oftentimes. Like there's this dimensional bleeding that happens where they're kind of still in one dimension, but they're also still in another. That's why they're not. Mm-hmm. People are like, well, why can't they ever come completely into full yeah. physical well, form where it's like and start talk to, talk clear to as day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's saying that because they're of a higher consciousness and dimension and that they're they're not you know, they're not able to do that or they don't want to do that because of maybe there's some ramifications to completely materializing into our, you know, the dimension of our world as opposed to staying in there. It's like maybe that's the best they can do without completely coming into it, not being able to get back. So there could be reasons for why. Kind of like dipping in. Yeah. Exactly. There, there could be reasons for why a lot of UFOs are orbs and kind of these lights. It's almost like tons of different forms of light that are coming through like it's interesting mm-hmm. that light is the one thing that can transcend the dimensions, dimensions yeah so very very interesting that this is. next bit is also probably one of the most interesting bits that he's captured to me at least now this is beautiful we were at this uh, on the beach and this appears right on the sand in front of me and you can see the eyes very faintly it's barely in this dimension it's very crystalline uh, it's pitch black on this beach. This would be a beautiful cover for a book someday. My sixth book, maybe. But uh, this being highly intelligent, an extraterrestrial civilization at the level of the celestial. So it, it visualized humanity evolving to the point that everyone on Earth were in cosmic consciousness and enlightenment. That's what we're talking about. Half a million to a billion years ahead of us. You can fill in the blanks on that. That to me is really wild because he's what he's talking about is at the celestial form of consciousness or civilization. We're talking about all of us being like angelic creatures, basically, where we're all we're we're so highly evolved that we're not even contained by a physical body anymore. We're basically an angel, or like the angel's the best way to describe like a tangible idea of what these things are they're they're almost like gods like they're in the yeah they're at one of the highest states of consciousness possible for a being on the kardashev scale if we bring that up again that's the highest state well the kardashev essentially being a god right exactly yep yep it's being at the top of the scale exactly okay so that's what he said visited him what was interesting to me and i think some people might catch this he's like that would make a great great you know book cover my sixth book Oh, yeah. he says that in there and a mm-hmm. lot of people would be like oh there you go you know this is all just you know him trying to sell books and i'm like he sells books because people you know his knowledge he wants to share not not because i think he wants to be famous or rich i don't think he a cares lot of people though argue though make it free then you know right why doesn't he right why does he if this He's is truly got to fund his work but and his life so he yeah. did was a doctor so you know he's got to fund fund yeah. his family and everything yeah i see people's criticisms though yeah i do yeah it's and i mean i want to see the bigger picture too like that right. was a little that was clearly an enhanced picture too mm-hmm. that you know like i doubt that that's the raw image that was captured no one because no, no. they're Definitely just not. taking bunches of photos when they're doing these ceremonies and they're doing stuff mm-hmm. and therefore afterwards enhancing it with software and, and that's see. when they start seeing yeah. things like that but he said, I'm pretty sure he said that he saw this just in front of his own eyes and that, that he captured that light being. So I don't know. It, it, it is really interesting. And then, of course, there's Bijou, which we've we've Bijou. already talked about before, which is another uh, extraterrestrial being that visited uh, their group at one of their CE5s. And he said, you know, if you look at the raw picture, you can't see anything. It's pitch dark. But then after enhancing it, that's when they discovered this being that was there. And Dr. Mm-hmm. Greer said, you know, he was communicating with this being. And this being told him his name was Bijou and he was from Andromeda. And I think a lot of people would be like, sure, bro. Well, the fact <laughs> that there was nothing in the original and then he had after enhancing it, which like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are like, that's bullshit. Then like yeah. you could easily create something out of a image like that. Like, how do we know that's real? We, we don't. We don't know. So we're just taking his word for it at this point. But he obviously clearly truly believes in what he's doing. He really truly believes that he's understands consciousness on a very, very deep level, probably more so than many neurologists and scientists would even say they understand it. I mean, I think a 
a neurologist would be like, this guy needs to see a neurologist. Like there's something, <laughs> something going on with him because he's creating all of these, these things in his head and, you know, making people believe that they're real when maybe in fact they're not. I just, I just don't personally get that vibe. Like I definitely see why people think that and why people are skeptical, but something about him just screams genuine to me. And I don't know if that's just naive, but I, what he believes really happens to line up with what I believe as far as certain conspiracies, what he believes, what he doesn't yeah. believe. Just his kind of view of everything is already what I believed before I started hearing him really. Right. So I don't know. You, I, I'm you know skeptical of most people in the alien world. I'm least skeptical of, well, I'm least skeptical of Bob Lazar. He's the real, he's like anything Bob says, I believe. Um, but Dr. Greer, I don't know. He He's up there. He's someone I tend to want to believe more than others. But it's also because I'm like, his his view of things is very appealing. Well, I was going to say, that's like human nature, right? To right. like believe things that you already believe that feels good. Like you mm -hmm. want people to agree with you. So like naturally, if you find someone who believes the same thing as you, you're going to be like, oh, well, yeah. of course. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's like Dr. Greer says yeah. aliens aren't a threat, so yeah. I shouldn't be scared. And Right. But then it's like, you hear other people talk about it and they say that they definitely could be a threat. In fact, they already are. Like some people make a completely different argument. So it's just hard with so much information and not a lot confirmed to really believe anything when it comes to this 100%. Right. You know? Yeah. I don't want to yeah. commit to the Dr. Greer train completely. Cause I mean, if you believe in everything he says, it, it, negates a lot of other things and so yeah and i think ultimately he would say go and experience it for yourself like yeah and i think i would need to do that prove, to really prove that this like is it. true by trying it for yourself and seeing seeing if it works for you then take us out to the des dr greer we are ready to see the aliens we're out to the mountains even we could go anywhere you can do it anywhere that's the thing about it people do it all over the world there's groups all over the world and that's what the app does too is it can connect you with ce5 yeah, i'm groups. just kidding oh. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> only in the desert <laughs> very true well here's here's a review i wanted to read on this whole film in variety.com magazine and it's it's pretty harsh but i think it's important to to read this because we got to look at bo both sides fairly. Mm -hmm. So this review said part of the strange psychology of our time involves people with vast platforms stating things that aren't true as if they were true and doing it often enough that they believe it themselves. Okay, real fast, just to go off of that. Yes, that is a true statement, but it doesn't mean that every single person speaking with a platform right. about something is saying something that's not true. Right. Like, yes, there are people with platforms, of course, that say things that aren't true. And there that doesn't are mean that people, everyone with a platform is spewing lies. No, but there are people in this world of aliens and UFOs, and I won't name any names, that are very much doing this, okay. that are saying that they they contact aliens they know aliens they're a part of these special programs that they mm -hmm. they go out and they do all this <laughs> mm -hmm. stuff and there's off-world bases and it gets just wild and in reality it it seems to all be a bunch of bullshit a big fairy tale mm -hmm. and yet it does seem like these individuals go on believing that this is in fact true when it's not and almost creating a cult following as a result of it people that are are dedicated to these people because they truly believe these people do have this special knowledge from it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, I have insiders and whistleblowers who are in all of these these programs that we're mm -hmm. talking about that have given me this information. It's anybody can do that. But to have the proof behind it is is another thing. So it goes on to say, and this was this was interesting, too, that we didn't bring up yet. When Dr. Greer chokes up into what they said, an Oprah moment <laughs> and weeps on camera at the thought of all the people on his team who've either committed suicide or been assassinated. And yes, he says this, you're seeing a man who will go the extra mile to sell his snake oil. What do you think about that? Well, do you remember that part? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I mean, he has proof that some of his fr his teammates did or they were afraid or been harassed like it's not just completely made up so I, I guess they're arguing that he's just making all that up to make to hit people's emotions and then sell them things right okay okay i can see see that side maybe and i think it'd be easier to see that side too if you didn't know him prior to this mm -hmm. film 
I think if you jumped into this film as your first Dr. Greer film, you would be, you, you could easily get to that, that conclusion. Okay. So the end of this says Stephen Greer seems nice, seems sincere, and intelligent, but he's also got prattling on the mouth of touch of new age narcissism. What is new age narcissism? This is a whole so thing. So anyone who's new age, it, it just makes you narcissistic. Yeah. A lot of people think that because because if you think about it, a lot of the people in the new like there's a lot of people that are, you know, not knowledgeable on new age subjects that are very much narcissistic, that it does That's become true. about them. That and, is very and true. cults start as a result totally. of that. Yeah. We yeah, so know that as a fact. So. Skeptical. But it's interesting that. OK, so they end it by saying the narrative he spins is so extreme that you either buy it or you don't. Wow groundbreaking statement there <laughs> but i don't it's like they didn't really make any points about why he's what he's saying is actually not true or actually debunk him like people make all these other points about him but it's never actually getting at the information that he's sharing right or at least not all of it right you know well because i think i think he does you know he he does in a way come off as i'm the you know I without saying it like he's he's so intelligent I guess you could say that he doesn't need to say I'm the one who is bringing he doesn't like make it about himself I am ever the Messiah. but in a way he implies it because he's like well these are and he's very careful about how he goes about explaining mm -hmm. these things because he could have just gone and be like started the documentary with you know I was on on board a spaceship <laughs> yeah, a where they told me off, about though. the CE5 protocols. Right, that's a good that's point. That's left out. But no, that's he started in his with book. the documents. Right. right. Started so with the, the proof started with the yeah. So if you dig in deeper and you look at it deeper than what the film suggests cuz not everything about Dr. Greer or his experiences are in his films. The mm -hmm. films are very much kind of filtered in a way that they they really look good. They really look professional. They really look like He's scientific. He's bringing all this evidence to the table. And yet when you do find out, oh, well, he literally, you know, he has been touched by extraterrestrials. He's been on board craft. He's, you know, he's been at this for a long time. Then he knows himself that that's going to that's going to cause people to lose interest quickly with him because that's just mm -hmm. crazy to most people. People are like, yeah, right, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, and he, he can't prove that. So he's focusing on the things he can prove. And that's what he's putting in his films is the evidence in the CE5 film. It's all the documents and declassified stuff that he throws at you in unacknowledged. But at the end of the day, when you if you look at it from a you know aerial point of view at everything, you realize that okay, well, you know, it's it's really kind of up in the air. You have to you juggle the information because he throws so much at you that it kind of overwhelms you and kind of overloads you. And so you're like, God, this guy must be telling the truth because mm -hmm. look at all these documents. Look at all these things he's putting forth. Look at all these pictures and videos of UFOs that he has. And you're like, God, this guy must mm -hmm. have this stuff. Yeah, you feel like that. But then at the same time, that's where it gets dangerous, right? Is where you start thinking this person has all the answers. Right. Everything that comes out of this person's mouth is true. Right. And it's like, there's there's got to be some things that right yeah and yeah. my whole gotta thing stay skeptical in a way and my whole thing really in get that the reason why i like you said i'm with you i think that there's a lot of things that do connect the dots i think he does connect the dots on a lot of the conspiracies and just the whole suppression of disclosure i'm i'm totally on board all of that i think where i get skeptical is his whole explanation of consciousness because i truly don't believe that anyone knows the mystery of consciousness. I don't think anybody knows the different levels of it. I think that mm -hmm. I think it's a great theory. I think it it could be true. Absolutely. Maybe he just understands a very basic level of it, though. Well, it doesn't seem like it. He's talking about celestial beings on, right. you know, he so he does. Yeah. He's explaining mm -hmm. it as if he knows exactly what it is. And that's that's always dangerous. Like when he mm -hmm. does his seminars, he's mm -hmm. never like, well, you this know, I just want to get right. Yeah. This is my thoughts. Versus, and opinion. This is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. he teaches it as if this I is what it is. Answers, yeah, and I think that's I think that's where a lot of people lose mm -hmm. it with him is that he I I don't know I've never been to a seminar I, I might be wrong so hopefully you know if he's listening to this I want him to know that <laughs> I 
I've never seen you in person. I don't know if you give that sort of disclosure or disclaimer before you you give your your talks or even at the CE fives. I I don't claim to know any know everything. I don't claim to know that this is one hundred percent true. But based on my experience, this is what I've found. Mm-hmm. But from what I've seen online and from his films, is that he comes across as very much of like I am the expert on this. I do know mm-hmm. based on you know, these things and I'm a doctor and I understand. Yeah. He's basically saying I'm this gifted being. Yeah. I've been gifted this mm -hmm. mission to do this. And therefore the majority of us wouldn't have those answers. And like you were saying, are we even meant to understand consciousness to that level? Is a, is a human supposed to. Right. So if he, if he does, is that saying he's beyond human? Right. So yeah, I, yeah. And my other part, (laughs) that's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. My other thing too, is that if, you know, he liked, he's, his whole thing with this film at the end is like, we all need to reach out in, you know, universal peace and cosmic consciousness in order to communicate and bypass, you know, the department of defense and the militaries and the governments and not let them control how we communicate with these other civilizations. We need to go directly to them. And therefore that's how we're going to change the planet is all of us coming together, reaching out together as people communicating with them. And my whole thing is if that, were the case and that were the truth and this is really how it works i just have a hard time believing they'd let him be out here given seminars putting movies on tv mm-hmm. if that was the truth right that's always a big argument too which i mean people will say though that he if you reach a certain level of fame that they can't take you out necessarily because it would cause too many issues it could validate what you were saying if you were you know, murdered. Or True, something. but he started this twenty plus years ago. I mean, he mm-hmm. the, he's been at the C five stuff for a long time. Well, and Bob the, Lazar's still alive. Yeah, he's, but he's yeah. not out here talking about right. he aliens. He's pro. never even talked about aliens. No, really. that's true. It's true. He said, "Yeah, we have this technology that appears to be extraterrestrial." Maybe they just know that people don't. Not that many people take him seriously, or they'll just be like, "Yeah, or no not enough people." Him. Right. Maybe. I don't know. I want to know what our audience thinks about this, though. I want to know what you think about Dr. Greer. What do you think about the whole idea of aliens being threats? Or are they are they friend or foe? I really want to know the answer to that question as far as what you guys think. Um, because what do you every, think? I mean, <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's It seems like with how many species of aliens there probably are, the universe is so big. They're all friendly. Maybe the ones that can travel to us. Maybe there are threats out there, but they're not intelligent enough to travel. I don't really know what I think. I don't know. I think it comes down to. I I think it comes down to, you know, how much knowledge does, you know, how much. How much farther in technology and science are we really than what we are able to access as the public? Because I think that'll tell us a lot. Mm-hmm. I think if we do find out, I think if to the stars does come out and say, here, watch this. Like we all get to witness a yeah. flying saucer do these maneuvers and disappear and appear. Like, I think that will really kind of like that would do a lot solidify things for us. But until Hopefully. we see evidence of, of that technology, that isn't a, a grainy, you know, a, a low quality video or an enhanced photo or mm-hmm. something like that. I think you have to remain skeptical to some extent or until you experience it yourself and you truly believe, but Ultimately, I think that there's likely tons of life out there. I think there's tons of extraterrestrial species out there. But at the same time, I'm like, there is a possibility that maybe they haven't they haven't found us or there's just no interest in us. Because if we are looking at these scales we're talking about, we're low. We are primitive as fuck. Like we're And what if there's many others like us too? We're yeah. not that special and there's not a worth bunch of really spending life. a lot of time on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're I know talk- we think we're very special. The aliens are so interested in us. Yeah. Yeah. When in know. reality, it might all just be a complete mm-hmm. fictional thing. I mean, I still go back to this idea of UFOs are time travelers. Like, I know you do. Future humans. Like, maybe a future humans are visiting us. Is that saying, what Dr. Greer's seeing? I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe. Or in my other thought, too, and from a paranormal perspective, I really think that there's a, there's a likelihood that maybe what he's actually communicating with isn't aliens at all that in fact it's some type of spiritual being so it could be something from a spiritual realm we could be talking with angels demons or you know and and that's just a name to put on it but Mm -hmm. 
some type of of interdimensional being something that's not necessarily from another star system but rather just another parallel universe or another dimension to to the universe that we aren't able to access or see and he's he is gifted and able to communicate with these things because you know i think some people are just gifted psychically so if that's a word psychically but (laughs) i think some people do have gifts and they are able to to have these abilities that others don't or we just haven't realized in ourselves yet interesting yeah it really is you can go you go on i know we could we definitely could um but yeah maybe one day we'll actually get the man himself on yeah the show. i mean I, there's a lot of a lot of really good questions i think so many people just fuck up when they interview him they don't ever ask him the like the right things the yeah. right things because people don't do their research on him oh but, we'd have such a good conversation because I, I i would love to hear i'd love to give him opportunity to really answer some of these questions and skepticisms and and hear like I'm sure he gets hammered with these all the time. I'd love oh, yeah. to hear his answers to them and how he would explain it to somebody who's like, I don't believe you, Dr. Gert. Prove it to me mm-hmm. and have him explain, you know, mm-hmm. it a little bit more. So yeah, we'll that try to good. do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. We'll see. We're going to try to get to a, an office or a studio one day that has good internet. Cause yeah, not out in our, we don't uh, get the best in the garage, our here. backyard garage. So Dang. it's okay. We tried. <laughs> we do try. <laughs> We'll go ahead and wrap up today's episode there. Definitely let us know your thoughts on Dr. Greer, the CE5 protocols, or maybe if you've ever tried them out yourself. Mm-hmm. And we'll, of course, link his his information, his channel, his app, too, if you want to check that out. It is a really cool app, and, and try it out for yourself and just see what happens. I mean, mm-hmm. what do you got to lose, really? I mean, other than 10 bucks, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then also before we go, I just wanted to mention to you guys that we did create an official mile higher homies facebook page you guys have been requesting a facebook group or it's a group sorry i'm not really in with the facebook logo we have a page but then there's a yeah we have a page and we have a group we have a private closed group that you can request to join it's actually monitored by us and we're active on it so if you want to join and have some conversations about dr greer and whatever else we get into on this show then head over there we'll have that linked below and yeah that is it for us today, Josh. What do you, that think? Is what do you it. have to say? Anything else? <laughs> nope. And as always, don't forget to take your mind a mile. <laughs>